Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brad Berain. I'm the author of a book called On Waiting Well, which is about waiting on the Lord. I'm on faculty at Moody Bible Institute, where I train English as a second language teachers for uh, ministry and service. I've had the privilege of teaching in adult or higher education for 29 years in four different countries, the US, Canada, China, and Vietnam. And it's a privilege today to participate in this proverb a day in May project. Uh, I pray that it will promote biblical wisdom in our culture. The proverb that I'd like to share with you is Proverbs 25, 28. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Let me read that again. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. Uh, this is a simile or a comparison, obviously. And the first item in the comparison is a person without self-control, a person who cannot control themselves. They can't control their, their passions or their emotions or their responses or some other part of their life, perhaps. Self-control involves all of life, choices, actions, words, and even thoughts. Um, it's like a rider on a horse. The rider should be guiding the horse, but if the rider is not skilled, the horse will go whatever, wherever it wants. Uh, that's another uh, comparison. A person without self-control is like a person riding a horse, but the horse is the one deciding where they go. The second item in the comparison is a city without walls or a city that has been broken into or with walls that have been broken down or broken through. Now, that's not a contemporary image. In the ancient world, uh, walls were a symbol and a fact, a literal fact of strength and protection. If a city had no walls, the enemy army could sweep right through, nothing to stop them. Um, but if there was a fortified city or a city with walls that were in good repair, this represented the strength and protection of the city. Uh, maybe you remember that when David became king and he wanted to make Jerusalem his capital, uh, the people there thought that because they had strong walls that David would not be able to conquer them. Uh, them. They mocked him uh, saying, hey, the blind and the lame could keep you out of here. Uh, they were wrong. Their confidence was misplaced. David found a way around that. But that's what the idea of walls. Um, if you have walls in good repair, uh, they are a source of strength, of, of protection. If you have no walls or walls that are broken down, then uh, you'll be easily conquered um, or you're vulnerable. Think of your home, right? You have a, a, a door, and if you keep it wide open or if you don't lock the deadbolt, it's that much easier for a burglar to come in and take whatever they want, same idea. The simile then is saying that a person with no self-control is defenseless. They're completely vulnerable. If we go out into the world or into ministry or wherever with no self-control, um, we're gonna go out there and get slaughtered. The horse is gonna take us wherever it wants and wherever that turns out to be, who knows? Um, but we're unprotected, we're defenseless, we're vulnerable, um, we're going to, you know, be like a home that's getting broken into. The question is, what can we do about this? How can we respond to this truth? Um, maybe you heard me say a moment ago that self-control involves choices, actions, words, and even thoughts. And if you were nodding and smiling, I don't think you quite heard me. Let me say that again. Self-control involves choices, actions, words, and even thoughts. Now you should be feeling a little bit overwhelmed and definitely dismayed. And that means you're understanding what I'm saying, which is that self-control is beyond our human abilities. It's beyond our ability to do on our own. Um, it is a fruit of the spirit, in fact. You remember the list from Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience, or forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control is at the end of the list, but that doesn't mean it's the least important. My point here is that self-control is uh, part of the fruit of the spirit. It's not part of your best efforts. <laughs> it's not the fruit of your personality. It's not the fruit of applying a method you, you learned in a book. It is the fruit of the Holy Spirit at work in our life. And without that, we go out there and we're defenseless, we're vulnerable, um, we're gonna get taken places we, we don't wanna go. Um, so we need to pray diligently for this fruit of the Spirit, for self-control, uh, to be cultivated in our lives. Um, that's my prayer today for myself.
and for all of us.